Have we failed to teach our children about the price of freedom, the value of freedom? See, the Lord started stirring me up this morning because I've been on the seed and talking about the seed, which is about reproduction. That's all the seed is. It's a means of reproduction, reproducing what you are. If you're a human, you should reproduce in uh, uh, humans. I don't think any uh, uh, monkey produced a human down the line. I just don't think so. I think monkeys are still producing monkeys. It's just dumb. If we came from monkey, why is there still monkeys? I mean, the truth is we're reproducing what we are, who we really, really are, not who we say we are, not what face we put on when we go to church or to work. We can clean up pretty good when we go to work, don't we? Why? Because people are important to us. It's important what they think about us, especially men and women too. But men, hey, their work has is, is been given to them by God, so it's something that they value. I'll watch Gary. Now, my husband's always clean and takes care of himself, but I'm telling you, he'll just wear his old shirts. I do too, around the house. He won't shave. But, honey, he comes downstairs when it's time for the railroad. I'm like, well, you, would you, where'd you say you're going? Oh, he's going to have his starch jeans on then. <laughs> he's going to always shave before he goes to work. <laughs> Why? Because going to work is important to him, what he's, what he's, what he's, his image. <laughs> See, we have images that we put out there. But you know who really knows the real us? Who we go home to at night. It's these precious little children. Robin drives over, over an hour, isn't it, to bring her children. Got one. Oh, he's not here. Is it Justin's not here this morning. He's staying with his dad right now. She gets these babies ready by herself. Single mother's been single, what, about six years? Six years. She drives an hour every Sunday and gets here an hour early to sing, to practice. You know why? There's something was instilled in her. And, I, and Robin, I, well, I know we can't take all the credit. You, your mother did go to church. And, but we got Robin when she was 15. She came to us in the foster care system. She lived with us about three years. But through those years, she can testify to this, that we did not miss church, did we? Church was the priority. I mean, we might have took it too far. I'm, I'm not saying, but I'm just saying that's just the way it was. If you ask our kids what we're going to do, on, there was no option. There was no like, what are we going to do Wednesday night? We gonna stay and watch American Idol? Or are we gonna? No, it, it, you t- and we didn't even have recording. In fact, <laughs> we didn't even have television. <laughs> we were very strict, wouldn't we? I don't regret it. I don't regret it. She's here today. She had some bad seeds, some really bad ones that got her into the foster system that sowed into her life. But Robin, you're here, and those babies of yours are here. I look at little Dustin over there. Precious Austin. Austin is a senior this year. Austin, we love you, son. You're very special. Very special. He wanted me to ask you today, what are you reproducing? We'll take up offering later. We're going to honor our veterans here a little bit, but I've got to go with this while it's on me. He want, he's very concerned about what we're reproducing because that was the whole mandate he told Adam and Eve in the garden. What did he tell them to do? He didn't say, go live right. Let me go scratch some Ten Commandments on this tree over here. You know what? They didn't need any Ten Commandments. You know why they didn't need any Ten Commandments? Because they was with the Ten Commandments. They was with him. <laughs> they was with God, who with his finger later on would have to write in a stone for man. Because it was so hard-headed, they wouldn't listen to what he was trying to tell them the whole time. Do you think it became a sin to kill when he wrote, Thou shalt not kill? Or do you think it was already a sin to kill when when, uh, Cain killed his brother? Murder was already in their hearts. They already knew it was wrong. Before there was a law, the law just wrote it down and said, This is sin for you hard-headed people. I'm going to write it in stone so you'll know, Don't be killing one another. Don't be lying to each other. Don't be stealing. How hard is that? It's like a son, a daddy would sit down with his son or mother and say, now, honey, you know, we're not going to talk at the table. We're not going to, you know, chew our mouths full. I mean, just, it's just simple things. He just said, don't kill, don't steal, don't be committing adultery with somebody else's wife. Actually, it doesn't even just, it actually means 
sex outside of marriage right there, actually, not even, it's just, don't be, that ain't your business. I ain't going to go there. I could preach on that one today because that's about to see too. <laughs> Who you're reproducing with. How many, I don't going to ask no hands, but how many reproduce uh, children with somebody you probably should have never reproduced children with? Oh, now, I mean, that child is great and wonderful and God blessed it. But the truth is, I used to tell my boys when I used to preach at the state school, those teenagers that just, you know, they, oh my, I, they had so many baby mamas, we couldn't keep up with them. Who's visiting this week, you know? <laughs> I said, how come you are committing to li- the lives of your babies to a woman you won't even commit your own life to? That came out of me by the Holy Spirit one day. Think about that one. How come you're committing the life of your child to some girl that you won't even commit your own life to? But she's going to be forever the mother of your child. And you're in here incarcerated and you don't even know who's going to be in the house with your baby tonight. That's how messed up our world is. And they call me and take me be out, Miss Weeby. Oh, I'm going to have twins this time. Ah! They expect me to be happy. I'm not happy. Honey, do you have a job? No. I'm going to try. They really called to tell you I'm going to trial tomorrow. They might revoke me. Well, who's going to be there when the baby's born? Oh, that's all right. They got the they got big mama somewhere. Somebody's going to take care of that baby. Oh, see, we're reproducing some stuff in our generations because we've been believing some lies, even simple things about one of the guidelines that he told us in the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not commit adultery. That wasn't trying to be mean. God just, oh, I've got kids in here. Okay, let's go ahead and release the kids. I got to get deep now. We're talking about real stuff. You teenagers, y'all probably need to hang around. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Shane. We, we thought you was a teenager there for a minute. Do what? Y'all going to get me off track before I even get going. You see, God had a plan for the beginning. It was all about being fruitful. Here's what he said. Be fruitful and multiply. It was the plan. Two different things. Be fruitful and multiply. That's all he told them. I want you to be fruitful. What, what does that mean, be fruitful? Well, a simple definition means bear fruit. I want you to have some fruit. I want you to have something in life that you're producing around you, in your world. It's something for you. It's, it's, it's your fruit. In fact, the Spirit, what does the Bible say the fruit of the Spirit is? The Spirit's fruit? What is it? Somebody tell me what they are. The fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5 and 22, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Boy, that just jumped out at me this morning. Faithfulness. I, I was looking at gentleness and temperance. Do you know why I realized this here? This would be a perfect list for a spouse. Wouldn't this what you'd want to marry? Don't you want to marry a faithful woman, a faithful man? You ask anybody, uh, that's one thing they're going to tell you. They're going to say, I need a marriage. If you're just picking somebody, and we do this sometimes, there's non-negotiables. That means this is, a, this is the deal breaker. They've got to have these. One of them is they've got to be faithful. Nobody wants to marry a cheater or a beater. What's the old saying? Wants a cheater, cheater, beater? I mean, uh, and outside of God, that's about to be true because they've got anger problems. They've got faithfulness problems. But if I looked at this list, I thought, man, if you had a spouse that was full of love, full of joy, we don't want a bunch of old grumpies. Won't we have a fun? Don't we want to have fun? There was one thing that always attracted me to the guys that I dated. They had to have a sense of humor. I liked fun people. And I think one reason why I was drawn, I'm, I was always attracted to a sense of humor. And I think one reason is because I'm pretty serious myself. So we need, don't we need the opposite? That's why opposites supposed to attract. The good opposites that God give us, they fulfill that. And so I married Gary. <laughs> Who is funny without trying? <laughs> but Gary just made me smile. Peace. Oh, Lord Jesus. The Bible says, it talks with the women. 
He said, do you know that in what's a great price in the sight of the Lord? He said, what's valuable is a quiet and meek spirit. Didn't say voice. I used to, I used to miss that, the spirit. I thought, well, I'm not quiet and meek like Sister So-and-so. I'm not very valuable. No, it was the spirit that is so valuable. What is a quiet and meek spirit? A meekness is power under control. Meekness is, is when I, uh, meekness is power under control. What is the other? And quiet is peaceful. It's like a pond out in the forest. It's just a quiet pond. It's peaceful. Don't you, I'll tell you that's something about Gary. Now, uh, y'all, y'all, I have to talk about us because that's my examples, okay? Just forgive me for that. Believe me, we're not perfect people, and we definitely don't have perfect marriage. By the grace of God, we've lasted this many years. So don't think I would think we're something. But that's what I draw from. But there was one thing that I loved about Gary. And I remember the day we got married, our wedding, it showed it to me. And I was like, this is why you married this guy. Because I can get real hysteronic. Like, ah, get loud and get, you know, get all up in the air. Oh, we on our honeymoon, we got married on a Saturday morning, and we took off for San Antonio. We were very poor. We didn't have much money, and we were going in my car because his was up on blocks. <coughs> Watch that, honey. <laughs> and um, we are going to go to San Antonio, Texas. Woo! We got uh, the Minger Hotel right off, right up there downtown. You stayed there? Okay, it's a historic uh, hotel, and it was it was cheap. So, <laughs> but it was downtown, and we, we had a little honeymoon there for a couple of days. But on the way. In Desa- it was in the middle of July. Y'all know how hot it can be in July in San Antonio, Texas. Well, coming right in the, uh, right in the uh, outskirts of San Antonio, my fuel pump went out. And we were sitting on the side of that highway. Kids. Gary had been 18 for one month. I was 19. Ooh, ooh, he reminds me of that now. We were sitting on the side of the road. We had just enough money to make it. And we're sitting there, oh, my gosh, on the highway, big old highway. All I know is Gary got out there on that highway and got underneath that car, and he was we, we didn't know it was a fuel pump at first. And we had these little outfits alike. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> he had a shirt to match my dress. <laughs> anyway, okay, kids, it was the 70s, 78. Y'all know it was cool. It's very special. <laughs> well, he gets underneath that car, and I guess the fuel pump just sprayed. All I know is when he come up under it, that nice shirt was black. The whole back. He would rubbed it. I don't know what it was. He looked so bad. <laughs> he was covered in dirt. I mean, just oil. He had something all over him. And we end up having to walk to the station. And anyway, it was just a long go- I remember calling Mom and Daddy, on the, you know, and um, I don't know how we got the fuel pump. I don't remember. I guess they could do wire money or something. I don't remember the details. But all I know is that whole time out there, we were hours, and we were way past now. We were supposed to be at the hotel. We were supposed to be having our honeymoon. And he was out there working on this car, and he never lost his temper. He was calm. He took it. He took it so well. He said, it's Okay. We walked in that hotel that night, about 10 o'clock at night. We did not look like honeymooners. We looked like we uh, homeless folks. Oh, we come in there. We have a room. <laughs> we want to go to sleep. <laughs> Gary never lost his cool. And I went, wow, I got the right man. He can live with me. He can live with me. There's hope. For a woman who interrupts all the time, he reminds me. Oh, but it's a great price. It's worth waiting for. It's worth waiting for, young people. The right person, do it right the first time. A bunch of people are going to tell you. You don't want to do uh, do-overs in marriage. It's not a fun course. It don't have to be. Learn from these people. Learn from us. It's so important to the seed. Where you plant your seed, men. Do you know Satan's always been after the men 
because of the seed. You carry the seed. You bear the seed, and the woman carries the child from the seed. When no Moses, what happened? Pharaoh going to kill all, all the males, little boys. Never mentioned the girls. What happened with Jesus? Trying to kill Jesus. Kill all the little boys. Trying to kill the seed. In the physical. Don't you know he's doing it in the spiritual right now? Now we are the body of Christ, which makes us, in one sense, all males. Right? We're all male. There is no male and female in him. He's both. We're both in the body, and he's the head. So that makes us all males. That's why he says that the, the, uh, the, the uh, ministry was to help you to we become a perfect man. They didn't say that you're going to be perfect, Lord. You're going to be perfect. You're going to be perfect, Liz. What he's saying is the whole of us, and we're being matured till we become into the perfect man of Christ, the body. He's perfecting us. He said the work of the ministry, our job, the leaders, the ministry, the prophet, the apostles, the teachers, all those, that's their job to help her to get the church to be from a we, a bunch of individual pieces, to a perfect body, a complete man. Because as the church rises up and we become and we start connecting with each other, Brother Bill, we're all becoming our gifts together, connecting. The world starts seeing the man. They start seeing Jesus. And that's when his glory fills the earth. But not they don't see it all. It's not The glory has not filled all the earth yet because the we has not become an A yet. I was telling them last night out there on the park out here on our deal, we had all these different denominations, and I had a man come up. He said, I love what you said. I said, look, we have got to get above all this denominational and all these dividing lines and say I'm going to be the body of Christ, and I don't care where you came from, what you, where you go to church, what you did yesterday. If you name Christ, you're my brother, my sister, and only God can say no. It's my job to love people. It's my job to sow the seed wherever it goes. He said in the scriptures, he said, sow in the morning. He said, don't pay attention to the weather. Don't look and say, well, they might do it. They may not do it. I don't know. You know what? They've been that a long time. They were born and raised a Catholic. They were born and raised Pentecost. They are born and raised. It doesn't matter what you're born and raised. Don't look at the natural and say, I'm not going to sow seed there. I don't care. Just because people go to church don't mean they're happy. You can be in this church and not be happy. You don't, just because you go to church doesn't make you anything but somebody that goes to church. What makes you the church is what's inside of here. So sow your seed, he said, in the morning. Do not wait and see, oh, look how the wind is or the weather is. It's going to rain today or no. He said, just go out and sow in the morning. He said, don't withhold your seed in the evening time. He says, because you don't know if it's going to be the morning crop that's going to produce, the evening crop. He said, or maybe both of them will produce. That is in the word. I just quoted it to you, but I got it topped out there in big old bold letters. He said, quit looking and trying to determine who is who and what's what. Just worry about you and your seed. You go out there and sow some love, sow some gentleness, sow some peace. You go out there and you be the spouse. Look at that and just try. If nothing else, if you can just do that. And the only way you can do that is through him. Because it's the fruit of the spirit. Forget it. You, you are not going to always be gentle. You're not always going to be kind. You're not going to always have faith. You're not always going to have goodness, are you? Oh, maybe some of y'all do, but not me. The truth is, it's the Spirit's fruit. And if I have that Spirit and I am in Him and He is in me and I will stay in that place and bloom where I'm planted before I know it, the fruit is just coming out of me. I will be fruitful. And I'll be that wife that my husband needs. I will be faithful. I will be looking at every man or woman that comes down the line. I'll find some way to get over that porn, which is nothing but adultery. You need to get a hold of that devil. It's all through the church. Y'all know this. I ain't talking to anybody in particular. I'm talking to all of you. If it ain't you, it could be your kids. I had a mother tell me this week, well, I just found something. I mean, that's normal. That's the world we live in. But you got to be careful. We've got to be mindful of this because Satan's trying to steal the seed. He's trying to produce, uh, uh, pervert the seed. Even sex is not normal anymore. I may just be real. I worked in the prisons a long time, and I didn't even, believe, believe me, I was raised naive. But when I got in there, Lord have mercy, we clean up his education. I seen some stuff, you know what? And I know I'm supposed to see it. Oh, why'd you look at it? I need to see it. I need to know how perverted, perverted this world is. 
It used to be a man and a woman, just normal. It ain't that no more. If it ain't perverted, it ain't even good anymore. It's so perverted. Satan's trying to pervert the holy thing. Sex was holy. God made it holy. It's the only thing that produces another life. It produces a soul. It's holy to God. Treasure it. Teach your children to treasure their sexuality. Teach your young men to treasure their seed. That's what bears children. He told them, be fruitful, have the fruit. But then he said, also, I need you to multiply it. Because he said, I want to fill the earth. He said, little fish, multiply. He told them to multiply. Fowls of the air, multiply. Trees, vegetables, the herbs, he said, multiply. Adam and Eve, multiply. God don't come down here and say, oh, okay, I'm going to make this little baby, and I'm going to make him blue-eyed and brown-haired and, and, and bow-legged. He, he don't do that. I don't believe that. What I believe, and I believe in genetics. I believe in heredity. I believe God put it in us to multiply, and your baby come out, it might have their brown eyes, it might have your blonde hair, it might have grandma's. We do not know where Jodah's got this little cute turned-up nose. We can't figure out where that nose came from. It was not the mailman, as Gary kept wondering. It's not the mailman. No, because she got my cheekbones. She's got his attitude. <laughs> it's God's plan to produce after its kind. It was God's plan. It's called, it's genetics. He put it in us. It is the survival of the fittest. From when the sperm hits the egg, it's the survival of the fittest. He'll tell you that. It's the strong. Animals. I tell you, I'm raising them chickens. I see the survival of the fittest. Now, this batch of chickens, I let my little hens, and we just do it for fun. But I think they end up hatching between two hens. They hatched, I think, about 12 chicks, but I think only, I've got five that made it. Survival of the fittest. The best mama kept them, protecting them from the other ones. One, one old angry hen go peck a little baby in the head, and it dies like that. See, it's, it's God's plan. It's the reproduction. He don't go say, I think we need a pecan tree over there. Gabriel, go plant a pecan tree. No. By nature, a little bird, a little squirrel, will go get that nut and he'll go bury it. And somewhere along the line, the trees, a little sapling jumps up. God made this world to produce on its own. Because when he got through after the sixth day, he said some very important words. It is finished. And it's finished from the foundation of the earth, he said. Everything was made to reproduce after its kind. The question is, what are you reproducing? We're reproducing attitudes. The word. Who we are is what you're reproducing. And I'm talking natural. I should have saved this for Father's Day, but y'all just pretend this is Father's Day. But the truth is, it, this, is this is the Father's Day. It's supposed to be Memorial Day. But uh, that's okay. Hey, I got time. I'm, I'm making some. I'm wearing myself out. I'm going so fast. It's the age or something. I don't know. Are y'all getting this? Is it, are y'all getting this? Is this as good as I think it is? Because this is feeling good to me. You know why it's so good? Because it ain't coming. Out. It's not. Well, yes, it is coming out of me. You know why it's in me? Why it's coming out of me? Because I sit here and I get in that word. You know why it's in me? Because my mom and daddy took me to church, Brother Houghton, sat there and listened, and they'd make us sit on the front row, or not front row, but we had to sit right there with my mom and daddy. And there was no texting. It was called notes back then. You flipped them over to your boyfriend across the street, and I'm across the aisle and hope nobody's seen it. Now it's texting in church. Would you please tell your kids to respect the house of God? And if you had, put, tell them to leave their phones in the car. For goodness sake. We are not going to die if we can get away from this phone for two hours. Unless you're on call, leave your phone in the car. Oh, I'm using it for the Bible. Well, you could, but you know what? I, exp I really exp would really be good. Bring you a Bible in here and a pencil and a highlighter and highlight the scriptures or write them down. I promise you, you're going to write. More. Well, some of y'all can type like the wind. Well, you, you're grinning there, John. But I, I knew about your little amen app. His text message, instead of going beep, he goes, amen. Mm -hmm. Sly dog, sly dog. Lord, I ain't even looked at this thing.
Each day our lives we're making of our lives we're making deposits in the memory banks of our children. Charles Swindle. Every day we're depositing in the memory banks of our babies. I don't know, your kids, are they here today? But to seeing this young mother down here. Seeing a grandmother down here. You're making memories for your babies. Oh, I love, I think we should take our kids to the lake. I think if you love to golf, teach your kids to golf. If you like to fish, let them teach you fish. If you like to hunt, teach them to hunt. That's generational blessing. Generational blessing. Give your kids what you got. Take the time and do it. Multiply it. That's good. But let me tell you something. Don't leave the weightier matters, which is like teach them what Memorial Day is all about. Like teach them why it's important to be at church and why it's important that their seed is kept. I don't care what the TV shows and everybody just sleeping with everybody and, oh, it's just such a blessing and, and, and baby mama is probably in the d dictionary right now because it's just a word. It's just a normal way. Let me tell you something. And I'm not talking about anybody here. Y'all know, know that. Y'all know I'm not judgmental. Because there ain't nobody here that don't know what I'm talking about and you don't want it for your babies. We all want to be better, don't we? We're not self-righteous. We all messed up here. If you're not messed up, you probably need to go on across the street over there. Because they don't... We are not self-righteous here. We're not sitting here trying to say, like, I haven't made any pro The reason why we talk like this is because we know the real deal. And then we don't want it rep re reproducing that same stuff. We want our kids. I want my daughters to know. My daughters will tell you this. Melissa wrote this something for Gary. Melissa was another one of our foster kids. She said, you taught me what to expect in a man. See, I don't want my daughters to expect it and say, well, it's just okay if a man slaps her upside the face. No, it's not okay. You want to love yourself more than that than to put up with that because the Bible said you can only love others as you love yourself. If you don't love yourself enough to, to get away from abuse, then you ain't loving anybody else. In fact, you're sure not living your children. If you let your boys see you get abused and talk to like a dog and you don't do nothing, I have dealt with those boys in prison. Angry. Fueled because they seen men beat their mama and nobody did anything about it. And there's little boys in that back room going, one day nobody's going to touch my mama. I'm powerless now. They're a little old bitty boy. They can't do nothing. You know, my mama's screaming, watching her mama pulled by the hair down the, down, the, down the truth. They can't do anything, but in their minds they go, one day nobody's going to do that to a woman. Nobody's going to do that to me. And you know what they want to do? They want to either get big muscles, carry big guns, or join big gangs, or something that makes them feel powerful. Oh, I see it. Men that felt powerful, pow powerless as children, they have a need for power, even outside themselves. They'll start doing physical things. Oh, I ain't preaching to nobody. I ain't talking about, it, it, I'm not saying everybody works out for that. But there's some people, I see a pattern. They felt powerless. And so they're going to do something to make sure nobody makes them feel powerless again. Sometimes it's money. See, Gary was very poor growing up, and he was put down. They didn't have much. So his work ethic is strong. In fact, he, 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 that's his thing he has to control because he can be a workaholic, see. Because his mother, the only thing she ever praised him, and she didn't do that much even this, he said he could weed the whole garden, and she'd say, well, you missed that corner. There's two weeds over there. He was never good enough. So he's always striving to be better. See, that's stuff that was put in us. Those are old seeds that my husband had to over and over have the good seed put in there and finally starting to overrule it and kill it out. That your value is not about what, what you drive. Gary was never materialistic, but his, was, his value was in his work. He, his work, I'm telling y'all, you men, I'm going to tell you right here. If you start a job with him, I don't want you to get your feelings hurt because especially if you're painting, he'll probably take the paintbrush right out of your hand. I see him do it one day. He's painting a man's bathroom. I said, just let them do it. Well, uh, I, 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 he was a painter for 15 years, and he, he's got to have it just right. This brother's in there painting. I, before I knew it, I walked in there, and Gary had the paintbrush in his hand. I said, you're going to fend these men. <laughs> that man's bathroom don't have to be perfect. The women's does, but not the men's. <laughs> Why? Because that's in him. And we can hurt people over what's in us. Oh, it's old seeds. It's in us. We don't even know it's producing. Control based in fear, based in a need for control because I was powerless as a child. Now I'm going to control everybody around me. Or 
just lay down and be so passive that it doesn't matter. I'll just let somebody else take, I'll just let a good woman take care of me. Boy, they used to aggravate me. Then boys would say, Miss Weeby, what I need, I know what I need. I'm thinking they're going to say, I need Jesus. I need a Bible study. I need a mentor when I get out. You know what they'd say? I need a good woman. A good woman to keep me straight. I'm like, yeah, how, how many weekends is that going to last? Mm-hmm. By the third, he's going to have a name for her. He's not going to be sweetie. Somebody, somebody gag the Australian back there. Gag the Aussie. Woo, hallelujah. Hmm. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful, bear fruit, and multiply. It means increase, reproduce, make gain. Oh, I could just go in so many directions here. Seeds are fundamentally the means of reproduction. Jesus told his 12 disciples to bring forth fruit. He didn't just tell Adam and Eve. He told them. Basically, he was saying, produce something that lasts. He said, I, you've not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. In other words, what is that? How's your fruit remain? Oh, this apple's still here from last week. A little shriveled, but it works. How does this fruit remain? I could eat this apple. Oh, the apple's gone. How's it going to remain? Down in the core of this thing, there's something called a seed. Several of them. If I took the seed here and went and planted it in fertile soil, then what I'm gonna, his fruit is going to, my fruit will remain. In fact, it will multiply because there's several seeds in here. And if I just planted one, it's going to multiply because not only is there seed in here, but there's a whole apple tree in here. In fact, there's a grove of apples in here. And out of one tree, how many apples grows off of one tree? And how many seeds is in that? Do you see God's reproduction? He's supernatural. He takes one. He said if one can put a 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000. 10,000. God's math don't equate to ours. Ours should be 2,000. Well, no, when God does it, it's reproduced and it's multiplication is what it is. It multiplies. Whatever you give God, I don't care if you said you had just a mustard grain of say, uh, uh, faith. It's the smallest seed, he says, the mustard. But he said if you plant it, it becomes the greatest of the plants. It's the greatest of the herbs. Herbs. It can get so big the trees come in that little seed, that little herb, and builds its nest. It's productive. Even the smallest seed you're putting. In, so don't beat yourself up about your kids. Y- y'all are here today. Y'all got y'all to pat yourself on the back. Kiss your arm all the way up. Who was it used to do that? Morticia and the Adam family or something. Kiss. You young people don't know who that was, but I thought I got to watch that at Grandma's house sometimes when I snuck down there because we didn't have television. But you ought to applaud yourself because you are here and you are planting seed today. Your kids was in here and seeing you worship and feeling the power of God. But we've got to remember there is such power in one service. Your child could be changed. Didn't y'all just have one moment that happened? Sister Linda told me yesterday over here, she said, I remember the night I got saved. She just could not wait for that preacher to be quiet, so she, she thought she had to wait to get saved at the end. It had to be the invitation that then she got saved. She goes, I realize now I got saved right back there in my seat. But we think, well, it's got to be done this. No, there's not anyone. It happens like that. It happens that moment that that word of God, that sperm of God gets into that fertile soil, that egg of your heart, and all of a sudden it goes, bam, and it life is all of a sudden starts, just like you started in your mother's womb. It's, it's, it's quickening, he's called it. It's to be made alive like that, bam. It's that magic that they can't even figure out. It's what a seed it germinates. It's dormant. It's dormant. Then all of a sudden you get it in the right soil, and the water comes on. That's the spirit, and what happens? Bam, it went from a little dead-looking seed. You can eat that corn, <laughs> pop it, pop it. But all of a sudden, you can take that one little kernel of sor- c- corn and put it in the soil, and all of a sudden, we've got a, 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 a corn stalk. And right now, we've been feeding the birds. We're old. We feed birds. We watch birds now. I got little birds. I look like an old woman. I looked at my yard. I'm like, oh, Lord. And then Bobby brought me something. I got, little, I got yard ornaments now. <laughs> no flamingos. 
It doesn't go with my uh, country decor, John. Flamingos don't work with log houses. We've been, we've been planting. All of a sudden, I looked over there in my flower garden. It was like, I got a, like, like this, a patch of just grass. Like, why is it just here? I was wondering about it. Well, other day, Gary goes, I moved that bird feeder. He said, it's taking over the flower garden. He moved the bird feeder. Why? Because the seeds, the birds, were knocking out that bird. It was going down that soil. They wouldn't eat them all. They were producing. And they've got all this grass. I'm going to go out there and pull. Because Gary put it right there. Oh, we could see it out the kitchen window. But we just got a circle, just a perfect circle, just thick grass. Because there was some grass seed they were eating in there. Not only that, but I've got a corn stalk. I've got a corn stalk. It's gr- I said, Gary, he goes, that's corn. That little squirrel didn't get it all. Gary's chasing off the squirrels. I, I said, what's the difference between feeding a squirrel and feeding a bird? That ornery squirrel, he's out there again. I s- he don't know I went and took some of the, the corn. I threw it out there for him. He had some leftover corn from the deer feeder. Oh, yeah, he don't know what's been happening to it. He don't know that I've been feeding Fred and Bertha. He don't even know about them two little, uh, little uh, squirrels that come out there. He will now. We might need to edit that part. But I looked out there. I said, that looks like corn. He goes, that's what that is. That's corn stock from one little seed. I don't know if the squirrels buried it, but I'll know it's bearing fruit now. I'm going to see how tall it comes. <sighs> are y'all getting something from this? I don't want to just teach you something. That I want to, are you getting something that you're going to use? Are you going to leave today changed? Are you going to do something different today than you didn't do before you came? I'm hoping this is going in some fertile ground that is going to produce fruit that's going to remain. This is not just about you. We are in such a all about me generation. It's all about me. No, it's not. If I just went and done uh, do the years that we were married, we, we haven't, we're still married, but the years, if I had just done what was comfortable for me, don't you know at times, or Gary, don't you know Gary could have got him another woman? He could have walked off and left the responsibilities of marriage because it's not easy and it sure hadn't been easy living with me. He could have walked off, but you know what he didn't do? A lot of the old folks that we stayed for the kids. Well, yeah, we stayed for the kids. One reason, because we didn't want to, he didn't want his children to suffer what he did. He never seen his daddy. His daddy lived with another woman in Minnesota, and every now and for several years, she, he, I guess she'd kick him out every now and then. She got tired of his drunken ways, and he'd come to Texas, and Lucille, his mother, oh, God help me, would break, just let him come back in the house. And he'd stay there for a few months, beat up everybody, take everything, and leave again and be gone for the next five years. He was determined that his children were not going to live like that. And he was going to learn how to be a good daddy because he didn't know how to be a good daddy. There is no excuse for it, guys. I don't care what kind of pathetic childhood you have. You're now responsible for who you are now. It's important to look back and I can say that's who I was, but that ain't who I had to stay. If you don't know how to be a good daddy, go get you some parenting tapes and watch them. You go find you a good man in church and follow and say, how did you do it? How in the world did you stay married? I'm having a hard time with this woman of mine. I'm ready to leave. I'm ready to get out of here. She's driving me crazy. What did you do? Well, you're not married yet. Let me find some ideas. <laughs> there you go, Brad. How long y'all been married? He put, you put up with her. How many? 35 years. How did you do it, Brother Brad? Somebody needs to get with Brother Brad and hang out with him. You ask Gary. Ask Gary how he learned to be a good husband. He'll tell you. He'll say, Joe Burt. That was my daddy. He'll tell you that, won't he? My husband is still grieving over his father-in-law. I went to his daddy's funeral with Gary. He never shed a tear. He didn't even want to pay for it. None of the kids wanted to buy him a tombstone. One daughter finally went and bought a little tombstone. They were so angry and bitter through daddy. It took him years to overcome it. But you know who taught him? His daddy didn't teach him. His daddy didn't stick around long enough to teach him how to be anything. He said, my daddy only taught me one thing to go on and how to, to mix his uh, Coke and gin or whatever it was. Uh, he, 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 he taught me how to drink. He said, my kids will never see me drink. 
Oh, he made up his mind. That was his deal. I'm not. Please, y'all know that I'm not talking about alcohol this morning. That's just one little. That's just. It's not. That's not my sermon. Please don't feel that day. I'm just using that for an example. It's just an easy example because that's something my husband dealt with. But he says I learned from his father-in-law. He submitted to my daddy. He honored my daddy as a father, and he received the father's blessing. Everybody knows in my family that Gary is just as close to my daddy as Kelly, which is my only brother. It didn't matter about blood. It's not, I'm telling y'all what, this genetics is not about the blood here. We do get things physically handed down to us through our genes. We inherit things. You inherit your eyes. You can inherit, you inherit temperament. There's different temperament. But you know what else? But there's spiritual DNA. There's things you inherit spiritually. There's things that you can glean. You attach yourself. When you honor somebody as the father, you get the father's blessing. It goes both ways. Do you know? And that, Oh, it goes spiritually. When you honor us, Gary and I, as your spiritual pastors or your spiritual parents in this house, do you know that our generational blessing goes down to you? Honor goes up. Blessing comes down. It's that way. It's not because we're anything to honor. It's the gift. It's the gift that's within us. It's honorable. It's the position that he set us in this body to do that. That's like Dr. Hamby. We honor him as our spiritual father. And what we go and we, we submit to his authority. And he's not some controller. It's not, we don't control y'all, do we? We don't have to control. You don't have to control kids that are honoring their parents. When you're honoring your parents, I'm telling I'm going to be honest with y'all. Our kids, were, they, we really never hardly spanked them. Joda, I think he, she can remember one, they remember like one spanking. I mean, they got, I, they used a hairbrush on their arm a few, well, quite often. <laughs> Trying to fix a herd of, you know, I had an assembly line of hair in the morning. Our first girls, we had two daughters and we took three little girls. Okay? They were 12, 11, 10, like 9, and 5. They're all be getting ready for the church, school in the morning. All of them had long hair. And, and you know, they moved in with us. So they wanted to have long hair like us, too. Though. So, uh, anyway, and, and, and we did hair. But every now and then, man, you better not sass me when I got a brush in my hand. Huh? God. <laughs> CPS, I, I changed that. I did not do that to the CPS kids. I never used a brush on you, did I, Robin? Please. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. A kid that's honoring you, you're not having to discipline them. We don't have any control in this. Show. We don't have to have control. We have order in the house. When order is flowing, nobody has to control you. Just let the order go. But when you honor the order and you know your order and you honor your headship, what happens? You get, the, you get the blessing. You already get it. It's a spiritual thing that's passed down to you. You will get things. But, uh, I know your name right now. I just went out of my head. Dwayne. If y'all ain't got to know Brother Dwayne, he w drives all the way from Pottsboro, Texas to be here. And he came once, and I don't think he's missed a Sunday since. Dwayne Burns right there. I know you got gifts in you. I know you got stuff in you. God's bringing it back up, isn't he? We're watering some old seeds, aren't we? They ain't going nowhere. It's still in you. God is bringing out things sometimes with place. It's laid dormant. See, seeds will lay dormant into the right environment. You read about it. I've been studying about seeds. They're dormant. They're not dead. They're dormant. And you get in the right environment and bing, life spurts forth at the right time. Some of you, you're wondering, where's, where's my ministry? Where's this? It's just not timing yet. It's just not timing. There's some things that are in time. In time. It happens in time. God has always been a generational God. He wants our fruit to remain. Here's Psalms 45 and 17. I will make thy name be remembered to all generations. Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. You do that by putting it in your kids. Let them understand what praise is. Well, I will make your name remembered to all generations. Psalms. So we the people, the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you and we will show forth thy praise to all generations. See, they're watching. I'm not just talking about your kids. I'm talking about those around you that you're spiritually producing. The people at your job that you're trying to impress. This is how you should be impressing them by who you are and the seed of your word every day. Let me make this clear if y'all didn't get the jump. This is not about just physical children here. 
We're talking about spiritual children. We're talking about the people that work beside you. Kim, we're talking about the ladies that work in that hair shop with you. That woman has spread more seed in the master's touch, talking to her customers, and they get in that chair, they don't know what they're getting. They're getting more than a haircut, aren't they? See, that's how it should be. When Gary gets a conductor on that train with him, it's going to be stuck on that train for 12 hours, he gets a little bit more than an engineer. They get a man of God in that room with them, and before they know it, he can, in the middle of the night, they can be praying together, uh, counseling, whatever. Everybody here, your job is one of the places. It's your place of, it's a vineyard. It's the place you go every day. You're either planting, when you go to Peterbilt, you're either planting good seed or bad seed, Chris. It's not just about what you're doing at home with your babies. It's about what you do at your job. It's your ministry. It's your, it's your meaning. It's your reason you were born. He saved you. Oh, I've got to tell you all this because I don't know if I'll get to it next week, but this is the best. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if y'all have ever. I, I don't know why I had missed this. But, you know, there's all these parables the Lord had given. And we talk a lot about the parables, and I talked about it on Mother's Day, where, where um, the seed, and we all talk about that. It should be called the parable of the ground. It talks about the four kinds of ground. But this, right in the same chapter, get this. He takes it to another level. Because we know there we are being the ground and the seed's the word. But this is a different level. Matthew 10, 24, another parable put forth he, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that sowed good seed in his field. Okay, let's go down here. And he said, um, yeah, I sowed good seed. And then Jesus sent the multitude away, and he went in the house, and his disciples came and said, Declare unto us this parable of, the, of this field. And he said to them, He that sows the good seed is the Son of Man. Now, we, we think that's the same parable, but no, this is different. He says, the field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The other one, we are the ground. Your heart is the ground, and he said, and the seed is the word. But this one, he said, the world is the vineyard, and you are the seed that I have planted he plants you in the horse world, or he plants you uh, at, at UNT, or no, where are you at? Where? TW, I'm sorry, that's comp competition. He plants you there in the school system. The world now is the ground. He plants you at Michelin Tires for a reason, and you've seen it over and over, all the people that have been watching the miracles in your life. You worked there when you lost your wife. They seen how you handled Shanna's death. Oh, you want to be seen? You, they see you in the fire. Oh, that's when you're really seen. Y'all know it's in the fire that some seeds only reproduce in heat. Hardwood trees, hardwood. There's those little soft trees, but what's a hardwood tree? Somebody tell me. Oh. There's, but there's some. There's, I forget what there was. It, somebody tell me. There's some hardwood. They're the hardest of hard. They only reproduce when fire. That's why they burn off some of the fields and stuff. It's amazing. Some of the hardest wood there is. Mahogany. And they see you're seen in the fire. That's when they see you produce fruit. Do you get depressed? Are you going crazy? Do you blame God because your child, your wife died? Or do they still see you go to church and praise God? And they see God when you're depressed. They see you over there praying or in, your, in, the, in, in the scripture. And they see how you handle it. That is the time that your, your fruit is really, really clearly seen. They see the peace of God then, don't they? They see the faithfulness of God in those times. But he said, the world is the ground and you are the seed. That means he plants you places. Robin, he put you in that pediatric dentist office. You went to college, you got that degree. You didn't even know what you probably, like me, I didn't know what I was really doing when I went to school. Most kids, they take them, they've changed their degrees, or, you know, their major two or three times. But God, is, if you'll let him, he'll direct your step, young people. He will direct you to places you didn't even imagine. I never thought I'd be a chaplain in a prison. I didn't even know anybody in prison. I didn't, that was a, be, they said that to me, I'd have cracked up. That was never on my what are you going to be when you grow up list. I promise you that. It was a teacher for a while. It was a, a doctor for a while. It was a nurse for a while. It was something else for a while. I want to be a ballerina off and on all the time. It was always a staple. Maybe someday. I don't know. But ballerina just, I don't know. 
Gary tried to get me to, t I can't even two-step, much less ballerina. I seen y'all out there cutting a rug last night. They cracked me up. I said, look at them babies out there. I love, I love just people that be themselves. What? They danced at a Christian concert. You didn't set them down? Of course. I was like, get the camera. The tattoo just showing. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm not advocating tattoos. I'm advocating be who you are. Be proud. And don't be ashamed of who you are. It's a part of your life that got you here. Shame is of the devil. Let it go. I don't care what I did yesterday. It's about what I do today. And every tattoo could be a story. Every scar could be a story for your babies. Every bad memory could be a testimony, the goodness and the grace of God. Ooh, I got chill bumped down the right side of my leg. Hallelujah. You are the seed, the good seed of the children of the kingdom. Bloom where you're planted. I don't care if the job, it's your worst job. And you, if you got to go there tomorrow, just go make the best of it. Quit looking at the boss. Quit looking at your pay. Quit talking about how bad the economy is and how bad the government is. And just go and smile a while. Just say, thank God I got a job. It'll change your attitude. And you know what? God might give you a better job. You can't be thankful for where you are. What makes you think you're going to be thankful for the next job? If you ain't thankful for the wife you got or the husband you got, how do you know the next one ain't going to be worse? You need to be appreciative. You fell in love with that person. You married them for a reason. You need to go back and have some, re go back in your mind and say, Lord, remind me and restore my first love. And people will invest more money in a dear lease than they will going and getting their marriage better. Oh, I can't afford counseling. Oh, I can't afford it. Really? I can't afford to go to that marriage conference. Really, I can't afford to take my wife on a, 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 a trip with me. Really, I'm going to tell you what's going to cost you is your divorce is what's going to cost you. Taking your wife on a second, third, fourth, fifth honeymoon is going to be well worth the investment. I tell you, I go sell a gun. Oh, I'm on the men today. I'd rather go sell a gun and take my sweetheart out on a weekend because you just might not have her. You might be left alone Look at all them guns, and they ain't going to be very comforting at certain times. Hunting gets real boring after a while, I bet. If you ain't got somebody to come home and cook that food that you just killed. Oh, Lord. Women, I got to think of something about y'all. <sighs> Nobody's going to come back to Father's Day. Shoes. Oh, oh. I had to try on three pair of red shoes today to decide which ones I was going to wear. I outed myself. I like shoes like my husband likes guns. But I tell him, I say, how many shoes can I buy for one of them guns? Yeah. yeah. Anybody else use that one? That's right. I, David, you even laughed. You are, look at you. I love you, David Duncan. He sends me the funniest text. He cracks me up. I ain't got one in a while, but you wasn't here last week. I'm going to tell you. Ooh, I hope you're, I'm glad you're here today. <laughs> okay, you're like, ooh, how many shoes can I buy for a motorcycle? <laughs> Dang God. I challenge you, invest in what's important. We got a young man right here looking at you. He's 20 now. Don't let me forget that. He's 20. His wife is 20. They got a little precious little boy. They've been fighting for their marriage. But you know what? You're still to get. Well, she ain't here today. You get her? Good. You're good. Okay, good. Just check it. Just check it. Just check it. Y'all made another day, baby. You made it. And you can make it all the way. It's worth fighting for, son. Let me just tell y'all this. We're going to start a series. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to challenge y'all. Y'all need to step up. We're going to start some Wednesday nights. Do you know how hard it is to get people to any besides? It's hard enough to get them on Sunday morning. Now you're like, Wednesdays? Well, that's my night I watch. What's more important? I'll tell you what's really important. It's your life. It's about what you're putting inside you that's going to produce fruit. I just purchased a, a series called Fight for the Family. And I don't, buy, I don't buy that many, but Gary, one day I come down, Gary goes, you got to listen to this. He's on TV. He re, we sat there, rewound it, and rewound it, and rewound it. And it was T.G. Jakes preaching on Fight for the Family. And that morning, he was on men. 
And he was talking about men and what their needs are. And how men get discouraged. And how when they're young, they're like, they're invincible. But they live long enough, you find you're not invincible. You find out as good, as hard as you tried, that woman still left you. As hard as you tried, you still failed in that or this. Before you know it, things happen, it builds up, and men get a terrible scourge called discouragement. And what it does to men to be discouraged. And then how wives can just feed into it. Instead of being their greatest fan, instead of being honoring them and helping them, we can become their, we can become their enemy. Oh, he was nailing it. And me and Gary, we sat there and we watched it and we rewound it. We talked about it. And, we, and the next day, he goes, man, you should watch that because they tore up the woman today. <laughs> I ain't gotten to that one yet. <laughs> but anyway, I, we just bought the series. I think it's five. I think it's five messages. And I said, Gary, I want us to do these on Wednesday nights. It's just I want the people, let's say, uh, commit to six Wednesday nights in a row. Because I want us to have a night we can just talk about it. I don't want to get in a big hurry. I, I think you should commit to some Wednesday nights to come. Fight for your family. It's worth it. It's the mandate that God gave you. And none of us are happy without it. It ain't about being married. It's about having family. I tell you what, some of the most miserable people I know are the mar- it's the married people. And it's these singles like, oh, if I just get married. I'm like, really? How'd that work out for you last two? It made you so happy then. Why don't you so excited about getting a third one? Why don't, why don't you, or fourth one, or second one, or, why don't, or first one? You know, I mean, it, just because you didn't marry them didn't mean you didn't have a, a relationship with them or live with them for years. The problem is, is, are you okay? Are you fixed? Are you complete in Christ so that you can be healthy enough to bring somebody else in? Because like he said, if not, you put your mess with their mess, and it's a big mess. Two messed up people trying to love each other. They write songs about it. They write hits about that. It's called country music. Why is country music so big? Because it speaks to the heart. It speaks to the heart of America. That's why rap is so big and that stuff. You say, how do those kids listen to that? You know why? Because it's speaking to them where they are. It's inner city kids and a lot of the kids start because they're angry, they're bitter, they're hurting, and they're so mad. And somebody gets on there and starts pumping and saying, let's get angry, let's do something about it. Let's go. And you know what? They just feed into it because it relates to them. Country music relates to people because of the brokenness, the hearts that are broken because we messed up from Adam and Eve. We forgot what he told them. We forgot the simple, even the simple Ten Commandments. Hear, O Israel, Lord our God is one. You shall worship the Lord God with all your soul, mind, heart, strength, and might. That means your money, your time, your effort, everything is God first. Men are, women are longing for their husbands to say, honey, if you go to church or not, I'm going to church. For years, the women filled the churches. The men, you couldn't get them there. The world is turning around. Y'all know that. Look at this church. This church is full of men. Men are on the rise. That's why the promise keepers was such a huge thing in America. Because men are ready to say, let's stand up and be who we are. They want to be that. They don't want to see their sons and daughters on dope. They don't want to see their sons and daughters in and out of jail. And they go to probation court with your little old bitty 12-year-old. They're tired of that stuff. And they're saying, something's got to happen. Our men are standing up. I love it. I love it. I want to say yay. And that's what this T.D. Jakes was talking about, how us women can cheer on our men and how the men can help our women. This is about the family. It's not just about marriage. It's about the family. It's about creating what's in us. But what's happening, we have been creating what's in us because there was dysfunctions in us. And now we're creating more dysfunction. I wonder why our kids stand up and cuss us out. The truth is, it's time to look and see, because what is the old saying? The apple don't fall, too, don't fall too far from the tree. Oh, I think we, need, we have some orchards in here. We have some mighty oak trees. We have some mighty apple trees, plum trees. You just got to know who you are and be who you are. Quit trying to be a pear tree if you're a plum tree. Oh, but look at them apples. If I just had his apples, if I just had her I get, I get in trouble with that stuff. But you know what? Just be who you are. Be proud of who you are. God planted you for a reason. He made you for a reason. Physically. Be who you are. Don't be ashamed of it. Because God is our father. The church is our mother. 
we're the children. And I don't even know what I got on this, but I'm, is this good? I'm going to pick up these same notes next week. We're going to work on this a while. Is next week the first? Okay, we ain't really talked about it, but I don't know exactly like what we want to do. We may just do what we always do, but next week is our first fruit Sunday. We're ta- calling them now. And that means after church, we're always doing the meal and the meeting. We're going to do it on the first Sunday of the month. We need to have baptism. Sister Jennifer, you ready next week? We're going to baptize Sister Jennifer right there next week. I think there's some more of you need to be in the water. (laughs) Baptism is a burial. It's taking the seed and burying it and coming up with new life. Woo! I need, I think there's some might need to be some other burials in this house too. So if you want to be buried uh, at this time, at, and you get with me, and we'll talk about that. We have baptism. We're going to have a meal together. Um, what else that we do? We do communion together. This Sunday, next Sunday, will be our third year anniversary of pastoring this church. And not only that, but it's also the 10-year anniversary that we started this church. 10 years. Can you imagine, Kim? It's been 10 years. Since we, I, I was driving down, driving down 35, and the Lord said, the square on, turn, go to the square on Valley View. And you know what I said? Does Valley View have a square? That's what I said. I'm born and raised in Gainesville, and I didn't really realize that Valley View had a square. I just guess I never went west. And I took that exit, and I turned, and I made a block, and there was a little brown building. It's white now. It's what? The little brown building over there in the corner. And I drove up, and it had a little for rent sign in it. And I called the lady. She's in Louisville. And she said, well, there's a caretaker there in Valley View. He'll meet you there with the key. I made an appointment, met him, and looked at that building. It was perfect. It looked ratty on the outside, but it was just perfect for us on the inside. And that was the start. From there, we went over. We started having service in the senior citizen building over there. Setting it all up every week, and it kind of smelled, and it was kind of yucky. But you know what? We did it. Then we moved to the bank building over there, remodeled that. We had a nice little building in there. We filled that thing. We had to have two services every Sunday. We had a hundred in the first service and a hundred in the second. We had two hundred people. About I mean, telling you, regular basis, crammed in there like little sardines. You just didn't want to get right by the speaker because you just probably got to have some earplugs. It was just right there. But you know what? You didn't care. People didn't care because the power of God was on it. How many of y'all came in the bank building? Came in the bank building. I don't know if y'all know this, but they finally sold that building. They're redoing it. They're making a brewery there. <laughs> they're making whiskey there. They're going to make it, and they're also going to sell it. But, the, but uh, Whiskey Hollow. I ain't that the truth. That's it. You go. You go, Brother Art. I like that vision. But you know what? I, 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 it was first of all like, oh, we went from the Christian gathering to the Whiskey Hollow. But you know what? What he showed me so easy. First of all, you don't get much traffic over here. The truth is people go, the Mountain Springs people, they go, they don't go this way. They go right on the highway or they go the, uh, that road. Y'all know this. Valley View has grown so much that way. But they don't, this square don't get much traffic. It's going to now. They're going to come over here. They're going to do that, aren't they? But you know what they're going to see? They're going to see us. And we're fixing to get some big old signs. So they ain't going to, they can be blurry eyed. They're going to not miss this one. It's going to have like four foot letters. It's going to say Christian gathering down the side of that building. I'm serious. They're fixing to come do it. They're going to give us the bid. And it's going, it's, you know, everything works out for God's good. It, it's, it is. It's, it, people are just needy. That's all it is. Don't condemn anybody for what they do. That's just their, that's just their self-medication until they can get Jesus. And not, I'm not just talking about getting Jesus. People get Jesus and still have problems. Now, don't get me We should think you got Jesus. Every, no, you can have Jesus for years and still be a hidden drunk. That's the truth because you ain't been delivered yet. You might have got saved. You might have got deli- uh, eternal life, but you hadn't got deliverance in here. You're still carrying wounds from the father. You're still calling problems from your mother. you still got a bunch of old seeds that you just need some self-medication. That's all that is. 
Some people drink. Some people do drugs. Some people work all the time. Don't judge somebody. It's just all their means. Some people buy too many shoes. I'll just say it. Some people stay out there on the, on the creek bank and they're fishing all the time. But you know what? Let me tell you something, though, David, the difference in you. It's okay. Here's Daddy. You tell me. He learned to fish from his daddy, but his daddy was an alcoholic, and they went out there and fished together. But that's not who you are now. You kept the good part of your daddy. You learned how to fish. Fishing's a good thing, as long as it ain't the main thing. The main thing's right beside you. You better keep the main thing the main thing. <laughs> or you're going to be fishing alone, and you're going to need something to self-medicate. That's all it is. People self-medicating. Don't ever judge somebody for their what they do and their behavior. They're simply self-medicating because they're hurting. That's a good sign that they need some salve of the Holy Ghost to come in and love on them. The only way they're going to get it is love, never condemnation. Don't you judge anybody. Oh, that never heals. That only separates. I'm going to stop here.